Okay, so this is our chemical changes lab. This is the one that we did in three different parts. So here are my test tubes, there's my magnesium, my hydrochloric acid, my water, and then I have my baking soda, my cream of tartar, and my calcium hydrox or calcium chloride in, in this container with my little dipping dots. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is if you remember, we're supposed to fill up our test tubes here. Each one of these test tubes gets a different amount of water, starting with zero, zero mils of water, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And then once we get our water into each one of these, we're gonna put five milliliters of hydrochloric acid into each one of these as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to set it up with the five mils of water, or the, the water in each one. So I'm going to use my graduated cylinder. Let's start with two. Not. Four. Six. Eight. And 10. So now I have all of my water put into my test tubes like I need it to be. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my hydrochloric acid into each one of these test tubes for our reaction. So here's my hydrochloric acid and I'm going to use a graduated cylinder so I can put five mils in each one. So there's five, goes in the first one. Five in the second one. There's five in the third one. That's way too much. This one, got two left. That's the hard part, getting it just right. There's this one. 
we're gonna do one more. So there we go. So now we have all of our hydrochloric acid and our water in each of our test tubes. So the next step that we had was to drop our magnesium into our test tubes. So here are our test tubes. You can see that they have different amounts of liquid in them. So now I'm going to take my magnesium strips and I am going to put them in here as quickly as I possibly can so that you can see them all reacting at the same time. So you can see that one's already started reacting, that one's floating to the top, and these two, see so you can see the rate of reaction. And this one is getting quite warm, not as much, and you can start to see the vapor coming off the top. So the next thing that we're supposed to do is we're supposed to light a splint and put it in the top. So we're gonna start that with this one where I started putting it in first. Get my splint lit, so here we go. Put it in, makes a little noise. Here we go again. It's difficult to do with the camera. And then here, there, and there. We're really quick, we might be able to do it again. And there, so you can see that as we do this, and you can see all of, oh, my stick's still on fire. So put that out. You can see that these are producing a vapor, and they are still reacting down here at the bottom. So that is the magnesium reacting in there. And if you feel it now, this one is quite warm. And as you move up, the temperature gets less and less. That one is reacting quite well right there. So you can see all of the magnesium in there and you can see that that piece is almost completely dissolved already. So, and that one is still going very slowly. So that was the first part. The second part of our lab for that one was to take baking soda, which we have right here, and cream of tartar. So the first thing we were supposed to do is we were supposed to open our containers of cream of tartar baking soda and we were supposed to have a baby food jar and we are supposed to take a scoop of baking soda. So we'll take a scoop of baking soda, put it in there, and then a scoop of cream of tartar and put it in there like that. And then we're swirl it around. And did we see anything happen? And you look at it and you're like, nope, it looks just like plain old white powder to me. Nothing different, nothing exciting. So then again, we take our splint, get our splint lit on fire, put it in the baby food jar like that, and nothing happens, it's still lit. So the next thing we were supposed to do to this is we were supposed to add 10 mils of water. So got my graduated cylinder, got my water, I'm going to add 10 mils of water to my concoction here. There's my 10 mils of water. So I've got it in my graduated cylinder. I'm going to add it to my baby food jar. And if you look, now the baby food jar, you can see it swirl it around. Baby food jar is bubbling. So we have some kind of reaction going on. And again, I'm going to light my splint and put my splint in and immediately upon putting it into the jar it goes out and as we ugh, smoke in my face um, as we've been talking about this we know that in order for something to burn for there to be fire there needs to be oxygen well when we put the splint in it appears as if there is no oxygen left in that baby food jar for the splint to stay lit. So whatever was being produced in there is something that's gonna put out a fire. 
So that's something that you can think about while you're doing your reflections, is what type of gas could be in this baby food jar that's allowing the splint to go out every single time, okay? All right, the last part of our, uh, last part of this experiment was using the calcium chloride, which is what looks like dipping dots, but they're not edible and they're not safe to eat. So here is our calcium chloride. Looks like dipping dots. I'm going to take the lid off. Okay, so here are the dipping dots. See them? Nice. They look just like the things that you buy at Six Flags or whatever, but they're not safe. And we are putting in the cup 50 mils of water. So we're going to use our bigger graduated cylinder so we don't have to do it so many times. And this is a 50 ml graduated cylinder. So I'm going to use my water. I'm going to put 50 ml of water into the graduated cylinder. There it is, 50 ml. We're going to pour it into our cup right here. All right. And then once we've done that, we were supposed to take the temperature of the water. In order to get an accurate temperature, I'm going to tilt this over a little bit so we can actually make sure that the end of the thermometer is in the water. So then we go over here and we look at what is the temperature. So right now, it looks as if the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So our starting temperature is 20 degrees Celsius in this experiment. And what we're going to do is we're going to add scoops of the Dippin' Dots. So I'm going to use my scooper, and I'm going to get one scoop of the Dippin' Dots, and then I'm going to put it in here, and I am going to stir this until the Dippin' Dots, which is actually calcium chloride, completely dissolves, which takes a little bit. You can see that it's getting kind of cloudy as the calcium chloride dissolves in the water. Okay, I think we're pretty much completely gone there. So again, tilt it so we get it in the water. And if you look carefully right there, our temperature has increased. It is now approximately 28 degrees Celsius. So that's the first scoop. We're at about See, look at that again, 28 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna add our second scoop. So get a second scoop, drop it in, and stir again. So we're still continuing because I can't keep from pushing the button. So we're still stirring on our second scoop until it dissolves or goes away completely. Actually having a chemical reaction here, which is why it's called the chemical reaction lab. Okay, and if you look, pretty much all of the dots are gone. So we're going to take the temperature again. Gonna look at it, see if I can get this just right there. It is, and get in a little bit closer. And now you can see that it is about 33 degrees Celsius now. So when we put in that, that scoop, we got to 33 degrees. So now we're gonna add a third scoop. So, and again, stir. You see it's getting fairly cloudy in there.
Okay. And again, it's in the water completely, so we're good there. And we come up here and look at the temperature. And now the temperature is closer to 38 degrees Celsius. So at three scoops, we're at 38 degrees Celsius. So we're going to put our last and final scoop in. So this is our fourth scoop of calcium chloride. So there we go. It's in there. And we're going to continue to stir. And you can see the water is quite cloudy now, which you would kind of expect. Not quite done yet. Really close. Alrighty, leave the thermometer in there and then check the temperature one more time. And then you can see it right there with the fourth scoop. We're at approximately 42 degrees Celsius. So with each scoop, we went up in temperature. So this is what we call an exothermic reaction because the heat is um, given off in the reaction. On the other hand, we had the baking soda and um, cream of tartar, and this jar became cold. So this one, because the, the reaction took in heat and it became cold, that's an endothermic reaction. So when it gets cold, like the baking soda and cream of tartar, that's endothermic. And when it gets warm, like the calcium chloride and water, that's an exothermic reaction. So that is the chemical reaction labs um, so that you can revisit that and remember what everything looked like.